Okay, Mr. Jim, you all set? I'm all ready. That's just great. Ethel. Oh, Ethel, come on, hon. Get the huh? lid out. Oh. I want to open up. Opal, uh, before we let in the marauding herds, uh, may I say something? Certainly. I want you to know that I am on your team. In fact, in fact, if you didn't work me so hard here at the Glamorama, I'd offer to be your campaign manager. Oh, Mr. Jim, that is so sweet of and you. And the first thing that I would tell you is you better start tap dancing because this guy has got a real head start. Yeah, don't you worry about him. I'll tell you, this is nothing compared to the PR stunt I got planned. <laughs> Conference in room 301, starting at 5 p.m. Okay, is this okay? Just fine, it's fine. 5 Why don't you go ahead and take off, Liza? Oh, no, no, that's okay. I'll stay. No, look, at my therapist is going to be here in a second, and there's no reason for you to hang around. I promised your mother. Besides, we were, we were going to have lunch, right? Yeah. Good morning. No! Oh, Hello, oh, Sally. Miss um, Perkins. Hi. Eliza Colby, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> so, you ready for the big day? Mm -mm. Oh, we don't want any... Jesse, wait, I have to talk to you. We ain't got nothing to talk about. We done said it all, Angela. Jesse, please, can't you give me a few minutes? I'm your wife. I'll be right with you. Oh. Morris, what are you doing in Pine Valley? I came to see you. Well? Monique. What? You're not wearing your bracelet. Well, no, I'm not. Well, I mean, I wouldn't wear it to work anyway. But I'm not going to wear it at all until you and I have a chance to talk. You wanted to see me, Mr. Copeland? Oh, yes, slow and uh, uh, close the door. Please. Yes, sir. Uh, cigar, Sloan. Oh, please, please. Uh, thank you. Now, Sloan, over the years, I've asked you to perform several, well, shall we say, clandestine missions. You have something you want me to do, sir? Well, it's a simple thing, really. It has to do with Lars Bogart. is a bit out of my line, sir, but uh, I'll do my best. I have complete confidence in you, Sloan, your ability, your discretion. Thank you. Uh, will there be anything else, Mr. Cortland? Not at the moment, thank you. Very good, sir. Very interesting item. Ah, oh, yes, uh-huh. Very famous racehorse going to be auctioned off. Mm. Sale, let's see. You must mean Prince Orlov. He's won five European five trophies, European including the old toy. How'd you know that? Hmm? Oh, well, Lars was telling me in Bonkers about it. Bonkers, too? Mm -hmm. Really? Yes, he's really very excited about it. Is he going to bid on him? Uh-huh. Yes, very serious. Someone needs to take him down a peg or two. I'm just the man to do it. Monique, when I talked to you on the phone, you... Well, you seem to understand. Oh, I do understand. I left your place to go get my scarf. We agreed we'd meet in two hours. I came back and you weren't there, huh? I waited and I waited. I'm sorry. Look, I, I know... I know I promised to spend the whole day with yes, you, but... You something very important came up. Lars, it's me, remember? I met your business associate. Miss Madame Renault, well, whatever I, her name is. I She's don't want to talk attractive. about Madame Renault. She must be a really major stockholder. Look, please let me make it up to you. I promise you I will never abandon you in that situation again. Hmm? Hey, Molly! Oh, Mr. Bogart! Oh. Is that you? Nice oh. to see you. Oh, 
Oh, see ya. How's the trick? Oh, just fine, Great. thank you. Great. Nice well, you. what are you doing here? What have you got? Take a look at this. All right, I'm ready. Want a fair deal, partner, elect Opal Gordon? Yeah, campaign poster! I'm ready myself. Hey. Thank you. Are you running for town council? I most certainly am. <laughs> yep. <laughs> And I could certainly use some help from a patron of the arts such as yourself, sir. Oh, I said, well, what kind of help did you have in mind? Well, cash, of course. Oh, well, I hope you didn't come here looking for a contribution. Oh, not from you, Monique. I know you're even broker than I am half the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was hoping that you might hang one of my posters up in your window. Yeah. Okay, but when I saw Mr. <laughs> Moneybag standing here, I thought, well, heck. Let's kill two birds with one stone, right? The squeaky wheels, the one that gets the grease and all that. <laughs> I think it is absolutely great that you're going out campaigning. Oh, listen, lots of luck to you. Well, thanks so much. <laughs> so, what do you say, sir? Want to throw a couple hundred bucks in my direction? Is she serious? Well, you bet I am. I'll take cash, check, money order, food stamps, bus pass, anything negotiable. I'll I'm, take it. I'm sorry, Mrs. Gardner. I just don't make political contributions. Well, I would contribute if I had the money. I'm hanging this in my window, right where everyone can see it. Excuse me. Well, thanks a lot, Monique. I'm glad to see somebody around here cares about democracy. What are you, a communist or something? Okay, hon. All right, go out I'll and tell, tell me when it's straight. straight. Just stop and tell me when it's straight. Right there, it's perfect. All right. Okay, bye, Opal. Good luck. I thought you liked her. Well, I have nothing against her. So? Wouldn't cost you a few hundred, it'd mean nothing to you. Why couldn't you contribute? Well, it's just that we have so many incompetents in politics right now, I figured why add another one? Jesse, I'm sorry about yesterday. I know that I shouldn't have involved Jenny and Greg. Well, how are they going to help us out with our problems? They can't even solve their own problems. Jesse, I just thought that talking to them might help. The only thing that's going to help us is if we stop sneaking around like this, tell everybody that we're married and we move in together. Where? I don't know. Here, maybe. There's room here. Mrs. Grant lost her job, Jesse. She, she, she doesn't need another mouth to feed. You ain't another mouth to feed, baby. You're my wife. Jesse, what about my parents? If I move in here, they would disown me. Let them. They'll get over it. What would we do about money? Here we go with that money stuff again. I swear, Angie. See, I'm just trying to be realistic. Somebody has got to keep his feet on the ground. Oh, and it sure ain't me, right? Jesse, look. There is no way we could afford it. I got a job, don't I? You're a bus boy. Oh. So now we get to the real problem of the situation. Bus boys ain't good enough for Ms. Angela Baxter. Jesse, that's not... Jesse. All I'm saying is that you do not make enough to help out your family and support the two of us. You could work. I'm starting college this week. I want to be a doctor, Jesse. Oh, okay. Doctors don't marry busboys, do they? Oh, Jesse, why, why do you make it sound like I'm putting you down all the time? Because, let's face it, Angela, you're sorry you married me, aren't you? Jesse, look, I know that this sounds like a broken record. But why can't you wait a while longer? If I do well in this summer course, I'll have a chance at a scholarship in the fall. College. Angela, is that all you can think about is college? Well, maybe then I could get a job. <laughs> don't make me laugh. Well, Jesse, I don't think that I'm too good to work. Yeah? Well, why ain't you never done it? Well, what do you call candy striping at the hospital? Be serious, Angela. That, that ain't working, you know. You're just a spoiled little rich girl that's too proud to, to get any kind of real job. Jesse, what are you doing talking to Angie like that? Ask her, she'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs>